Welcome to the July edition of Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Powers. And I am Mary Lyons. And I am Michael Bullock. This month, we are doing a very special episode honoring our good friend, Dennis DeJesus, the President and CEO of Special Olympics Rhode Island. Welcome to the show, Denny. Thank you, Mary, Mary Ellen, Mike, three of my favorite athletes, three of my favorite people. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Can you tell us what it was like when you first came to work for Special Olympics Rhode Island? Wow, August of 2009. I can still remember the phone call I got from Anthony Scorpio and Mike McGovern telling me that I got the job. I was blown away, I was so excited, I was nervous. Uh, I had such big shoes to fill, Mike McGovern, uh, who, who left a tremendous legacy and built a great foundation of support. Um, I, I didn't really know what to expect, even though I was on the board for a number of years. It's so much different when you then become a staff member. But I'll never forget walking in uh, on August 31st of 2009 and began my journey uh, that 13 years later has now come to an end. But uh, it, was, it, it was a wonderful time. I had great expectations, tremendous excitement for me and my family, and just such a rewarding, a rewarding opportunity that I embraced on, in August of 2009. How have you grown in your position over the years? Well, uh, I think you grow by learning, and I learned so much. I learned so much from our athletes. I learned so much from our community, our staff, uh, the board of directors, um, the volunteers, but mostly the athletes who taught me so very, very much how to overcome obstacles, how to not take things so seriously, um, and, and just how to be focused uh, on the mission and the vision. And over the years, you grow in confidence. Um, you have some successes that you build upon. You also have some failures that you learn from. But I think all of those successes and failures made me a better uh, CEO and made me more in tune with what our athletes needed, uh, both on and off the playing fields. How many athletes and corporate partners were there when you started, and how many are there now? Well, pretty much I can, I always zeroed in on the number of um, what our budget was like. I remember back in 2009, my first budget was around $900,000. And today it's about $1.7 million. So you can see the growth over that 13 year period where we almost doubled our budget number. And in addition, we, bud we doubled the number of athletes who were in our programs and we added so many new and innovative programs over the last 13 years. Um, I don't know really off the top of my head how many athletes there were back then, but I know pre-COVID, uh, we were really humming. We had 4,000 athletes, we had 6,000 volunteers, and, and I knew that if we, in order to improve programming and expand programming, we needed more revenue and we needed more sponsors, and so, so I set out on that goal. Um, we have a tremendous program department led by Chris Hopkins. We have a tremendous marketing and communications department led by Jerry Walter. And we have some great people on our fundraising side like Tracy Garabedian. But I thought that if we could bring our message, the message of our athletes to more companies and corporations, we could expand that revenue to meet the $1.7 million budget. So proud to say, working with Tracy and working with all the great people in our, in our development team, that we were able to add new sponsors along the way. And if, if you have the opportunity to tell your message, then the donors will come through. And in Rhode Island, we've been highly, highly successful in identifying new donors, both individually, corporate, and foundations and in, in using all three of those to make sure we meet our budget numbers. Tracy does a great job with events. Pat Kirby does an amazing job with foundations. And I kind of focused in on the big number, the big dollar corporations to attack. So it, it has all worked very, very well and we've always met our budget goals throughout the entire 13 years. Yeah, and I can, I can understand uh, how successful it was, especially, and especially during tough times, uh, especially when the pandemic hit where 
you were struggling with fundraising and all that stuff, but how, and especially with all, how you connected with all the athletes during these tough times. COVID was very, very difficult. I remember in March of 2020 when the entire state of Rhode Island shut down and I would go to the office and I'd be by myself, the staff was home, working from home. I'd go to the mailbox every day and there were no donations coming in. I said, how are we ever gonna get through this year? And then gradually over time, people started realizing, okay, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but it's not the end of the world and I can still donate and donations came in. But that was a very difficult time for our athletes. It was a very difficult time for our organization. And some two years after March of 2020, we still haven't got, got back to where we were pre-COVID, where we had 4,000 athletes, 6,000 volunteers. We still have to work a little bit harder to make sure we welcome more athletes back into the, uh, into the fold, so to speak. Yeah, and like you said, uh, I mean, to get more athletes back, but of course what was big was having the state summer games back after having oh, two man. years of, uh, of virtual summer games. Yeah, 2022 summer games held in June were absolutely amazing. We raised the most money ever in corporate sponsors. So our corporate sponsors realized how important those games were to our athletes. It was an extreme, it was a great weekend, full of fun and just seeing so many smiling faces back together again. Mm -hmm. What is the most important advice you have given athletes and what they have learned most of working with us? I think one, one of the things I'm, I'm proud of um, is the whole role of athlete leadership um, at Special Olympics Rhode Island nationally and internationally and proud to work with one of the leaders on a national and international scale, Mary Ellen, um, who has become a leader um, nationally and internationally. I only hope that the advice I give my athletes is use your voice. Be vocal. If you see something you think needs changing, uh, don't assume that the board of directors and the staff have all the answers. Use your voice and come to the board and come to the new CEO and, and, and tell him and tell the board hey, we need to change things. I noticed something and I think we need to change it. This is your organization. And sometimes we always take for granted that we think we know everything. Well, we don't. Our athletes need to use their voice, be more proactive in, in telling their story to the board, to the, uh, the, the staff, and let them know that we, you believe that there needs to be some changes if you see the need for change. Um, but our athletes are amazing. They're resilient, they're tough. You know, nothing is gonna get them down. Not COVID, not anything else is gonna keep or hold back our athletes. That's a lesson that I learned, how strong and tough our athletes are through the hard times, but always in through the good times as well. Yeah. And also providing great distractions during difficult times too, like you know the laughter, the sp our high spirits, all that. Get, um, I know kept me going. I, I can imagine how it made you feel. I've never. I don't think I've ever walked into a room of athletes or been around a group of athletes without seeing them smile. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if they're I, laughing at me <laughs> 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 or, or just smiling because they enjoy my company. But our athletes, um, you know, have overcome so many obstacles in their life and they still wear a smile from ear to ear. That's a lesson for all of us to learn. Yeah. And I remember that, uh, that quote you, uh, you gave during the, uh, the tough times that mm -hmm. you are not alone. That couldn't no. have spoken any more truthful than that. Yeah, I, I just wanted our athletes to know that, you know, COVID was, was extremely difficult to navigate through. It was very difficult to understand uh, from anyone's perspective. You know, professors at Brown and Harvard were debating yeah. what COVID was all about. Never mind people like myself without a medical degree or our athletes. I just wanted them to know that I was going to be there for each and every one of them, whether it be through a text, through email, through a phone call. I wanted to make sure that they knew we were there for them. All of a sudden, sports and athletics were important. Mm -hmm. 
It was getting through a very difficult time mm -hmm. emotionally and making sure our athletes knew they had a support system. And I don't credit just myself on that. I credit Jerry. I, I credit Chris Hopkins because the three of us put our names and numbers out there. Call us anytime, day or night, um, mm -hmm. and so that we could be of service to them. What do you consider to be your greatest accomplishment? I, I don't ever want to talk about me. I always talk about we. Mm -hmm. This has never been about Denny to Jesus. I have worked with a great staff. I have worked with a great board of directors. I have worked with a great athlete leadership team. Together, not one, together, we have all done some amazing things over, over 13 years. We built a state-of-the-art headquarters and raised $3 million, $3 million uh, during a very difficult period, economic period of 2008 and 9 when the country was in recession. Uh, we've expanded so many programs, healthy athletes, young athletes, um, our Sergeant Shriver Global Messenger Program, um, and then people want to talk about Unified Champion Schools, and I don't take credit for that one. I give that all to Chris Hopkins. He was the one who came to me in 2010 and said, how about if we bring sports into the high schools and the middle schools? And I said, how do we do that? And we talked about, at that time, it was Project Unify that morphed into Unified Champion Schools. But everything that's happened over 13 years has been a team effort. And that team effort being our staff, our board of directors, our coaches, our volunteers, but mainly our athletes, because their story resonates throughout this entire state. Can you tell us what are your hopes for the future of Special Olympics Rhode Island after you retire? Growth, growth, and growth. I, I, I just, I've always said that Special Olympics is under a big tent, and there's plenty of room under that tent, under that tent for new athletes, new programs, new, new donors, new corporate sponsors, new foundations. Um, there's a lot more work that has to be done, uh, and, and there's plenty of room for growth, uh, in innovation, um, new programming, new vision, uh, and I'm confident that Ed Pacheco, our new CEO, president and CEO, has everything uh, within himself to make that all happen. Um, we just got to get out of our comfort zone a little bit and, and move the agenda forward in, in providing our athletes more opportunities down the road. And like you said, I mean, from where it was when you first started to where it is now, I mean, you could say it's a pretty big... Uh accomplishment for you well, but as you said there's always room for more improvement mike mcgovern carol nagel steve evangelista had a laid a huge foundation i hope i grew that foundation but now the, the there is need for more and more people involved we know ed pacheco has been appointed the next President and CEO, what is the most important thing you have taught him about what to expect in his role? Um, we've had a great transition period. Uh, we, we've been together well before summer games, into summer, into summer games. So he has a feeling for this organization and he learned a lot during summer games uh, about uh, the scope of his job and his responsibilities. What I've told Ed is when you are the CEO and president of Special Olympics Rhode Island, you lead with this. You lead with your heart. This comes second. In the business world, this comes first. This comes second. Not at Special Olympics. So I told him, lead with your heart. You can never make a mistake if you leave with the, lead with your heart. And the second thing I told them was listen to your athletes listen to them, and, and, and when they tell you something, take it to heart, because it's coming from their heart to yours. So again, leading with your heart, listen to your athletes, thank your volunteers and your coaches, the unsung heroes of this organization, um, and continue to bring that story, our story, uh, forward to all the residents of Rhode Island. 
What are you looking forward to most in retirement, and will we still see you around? Ah, uh, what, what, what what I'm looking for? I, I'm, you know, when you're 66 years old and you've been working since the age of I don't know 19 or 20, I think the first thing that comes to mind is um, just waking up every morning, wondering what's gonna what the day is gonna be like, having a cup of coffee and. My wife has a, a full schedule of activities. We're buying bikes. She wants to bike. She wants to play pickleball. She wants to hike. <laughs> she wants to swim. Um, she's got me doing a lot of things. Uh, I think I need to get in a little bit better shape. I want to work on, on my fitness and on my nutrition. Um, I also want to work on my golf game. That needs an awful lot of help. Um, so I, I'm just looking forward to, to relaxing, kicking back a little bit enjoying what life has to bring, uh, and praying to the good Lord that he blesses me with good health. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, you're looking forward to visiting a lot of golf courses in Rhode Island, uh, work on, especially yeah, to work on your work game. Yeah, my game, but I, getting back to, to Mary Ellen's second part of her question, I'm not going away. Uh, I'll, be at a, I'll be at games, I'll pop up now and then to uh, support our athletes, support our coaches. Uh, I plan on being at summer games in, in 2023. Seems like it's a long way away, but I'm looking forward to being at summer games and, and seeing everyone. Um, once you're part of this organization, you can't leave. You, you, you can't go away. I mean, it, I won't be in the same role that I'm in now, obviously, but I, 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 I don't ever want to say goodbye that I'll just you know, disappear. I'll, I'll, this organization and the athletes mean so much to me that my intention is to be around in the future. That's good, and I know, like you know, we see Mike McGovern on occasion. Like, yeah. um, I mm -hmm. wasn't involved that long uh, when Carol Nagel was involved, but I know I've seen her maybe one, a couple times. But it's good to see past CEOs come back, and now you'll be. You know, what, I, I, I got to say that one of the proudest, always the proudest, uh, for me, um, whenever I was introduced as Dennis the Jesus, President and CEO of Special Olympics Rhode Island. When I heard those words over and over and over again, I used to get goosebumps because the organization meant so much to me. When I would wear a shirt with our logo on it um, and wear that shirt out in the public, I wanted people to know that I was with Special Olympics Rhode Island. My wife and I, we'd go to Florida. We bought a place in Florida in 2018. And every time we would go to Florida, I would wear a Special Olympics shirt. And she would say to me, why are you wearing a Special Olympics shirt down to Florida? because I want people to know how proud I am to be associated with Special Olympics Rhode Island. And I want people to see that logo and know how supportive I am in the hopes that they may be supportive as well. So very, always very, very proud of that title uh, of president and CEO. You know, and you mentioned um, you know, first being introduced with your title and the goosebumps. That's how I felt when you hired me. Well, um, you know, we can go back to that day. Uh, I can still see you sitting across from me uh, when I asked you that question. And of course you filled up, and then I filled up. But I, I'll, I'll always say it, that the best hire I ever made throughout my entire career was Mary Allen when we brought you to Special Olympics. Yeah, and I remember that same feeling too when you asked me if I wanted to be a an athlete representative on the board of directors and I, how honored I was that you that you asked me to be part of it and yeah. and I'm so proud of it and I once again I thank you for that opportunity. You know it, for athletes there's a role for everybody you know you people do such a wonderful job on the TV show um, and, and for our athletes just coming to summer games and getting a medal or getting a ribbon means the world to them uh, all three of you, uh, I've seen you grown into such quality young people, and um, I'm proud of that. I hope I, hopefully I played a small role in that, not a big role, but a small role. But you're all leaders, and people look up to you for your leadership, and they look up to you because you not only do you represent uh, our athletes, you, know, you represent the movement. You represent what Special Olympics is all about. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick one favorite memory, what would it be? I'm not going to get through this without crying. This is my gold medal. At the uh, summer games, one athlete wanted me to have her medal. 
Wow. And I said, I can't take that medal away from you. Wow. And she said, it would mean the world to me wow. if you would take my gold medal. So there have been a lot of wonderful, wonderful moments over 13 years. This was the latest and the greatest because uh, she wanted me to have this, and I wear it so proudly. You guys have hundreds of medals. You know, you probably can't even differentiate which one means the most to you. But this one will always uh, have a special place because that, and I don't even know her name. She was a soccer player from Trudeau. And she just came up to me and, and I, I gave her her medal at the soccer venue and she says, I want you to have it. I said, I can't, I can't possibly take your medal. And she says, it would mean the world to me if you would have my medal. So I took it and, and I wore it and, and uh, it's a proud moment, but I've had so many incredible moments. I've seen athletes get, the, get a medal for the first time and look at their parents and their parents are crying and, and thinking that they probably would never see their son or daughter compete athletically. Uh, been to basketball games, unified champion games, and the relationship between an athlete and their parents or their guardian is an amazing dynamic to witness um, because as parents, we all have dreams for our children. And I think at those moments, they see um, their, their child's dreams being fulfilled. And uh, that means the world to them, which touches me in my heart. So I think any time I saw an athlete get a medal, and it's all instinctive, they turn and look right for their parents. It's the first thing they do, you know? And they share in that joy. And that to me is uh, what, this, what this medal is all about. It's all about hope, it's all about dreams, it's all about promises that all parents have for their children. Uh, and when you see that realized in knowing that you had a small part in it, um, that means the world to me. And this is, this is the latest thing that happened a month ago, but I, I could speak about hundreds of, of memories over the years. Um, seeing Mary Ellen uh, in Morocco with her hands being held up as one of eight or nine global uh, ambassadors from Little Low, Rhode Island. You know, um, but any, any time I get a chance to interact with an athlete, engage with an athlete, and see them smile, that's a memorable moment for me, a moment that I will tre tre uh, treasure for a lifetime. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining us, Denny. Thank you, Mary. Um, we will miss you. We will see you next month for another great episode of Special Living Atlanta Magazine. Dennis, it only seems like yesterday that we were taking the first Penguin Plunge together to support our incredible Special Olympics athletes. Now, you are passing the torch to the next Special Olympics leader. You have always let the athletes shine. You have been leader of the Revolution is Inclusion movement that has expanded the joy and competition of unified sports across the state. Congratulations on your retirement and thank you for your extraordinary service and for your friendship. Hi Denny and of course all of the staff, athletes, coaches, volunteer members and families that are there. I just want to wish you the very best of luck in your retirement. And we are so, so sad to say that you are uh, retiring today, but you have so much to be proud of in terms of what you did to progress and develop the program over the 12 years that you have been part of that program in Rhode Island. The, uh, the, the program has grown immensely and our athletes are now uh, included in a much more different way than they were uh, when you started out working in Rhode Island and that's a testament to you and particularly the passion and the love you had for the athlete leadership program and ensuring that 
the athletes of Rhode Island would not just be the best that they could be in their various different sports and the coaching uh, opportunities that you provided, but also that uh, the rest of the communities would understand and be accepting and be more inclusive. Uh, you, you did an outstanding job in that area and also for the wider U.S. programs as part of the Unified Leadership uh, Committee with the USLC. Uh, so you should be, as I said, incredibly proud of all your achievements. I have great memories of meeting you on Capitol Hill and spending spending time together there. Uh, and you are you're always just such a huge advocate, whether it's in Capitol Hill or in communities in Rhode Island or the, the wider uh, work that you've been doing across the, the states of the US. Um, your talent and your expertise and your knowledge will be missed greatly, but hopefully it's not the last that we will see of you. We have an alumni group and uh, we hope that you will join that group and help other developing nations uh, with some of the the talent that you have so again uh, congratulations on your retirement i'm sure you have lots of uh, plans and uh, take care of yourself and uh, can't thank you enough bye bye hey denny it's lonnie snyder here from the 2022 special olympics usa games Greetings to my IT deputy in the North. I just wanted to say congratulations on your retirement. You've done so much for the movement over the years and the people of Rhode Island are so lucky and uh, blessed to, to have you leading them. Uh, best wishes on what's ahead and uh, we look forward to seeing you here in Orlando in a few weeks. Hi, Denny. I just wanted to send my congratulations to you on your retirement. You have done so much for the Special Olympics movement and government relations over the decades, and your foundational work in this space is why we have the robust programming and support and relationships that we do with the U.S. federal government and with state governments across the country. Our movement in the United States and around the world will continue to benefit from your dedication and your accomplishments in the government relations field for years to come. I've learned so much from you in my time at Special Olympics, particularly about Capitol Hill Day, and we will certainly miss you. But I hope that you enjoy every second of your next chapter and always know that you will be part of the Special Olympics family, and in particular, the government relations team. Congratulations. Denny, congrats and good luck from Special Olympics South Dakota. You've been a wonderful friend. God bless you and good luck. Denny to Jesus, I can't believe you're leaving us. My new CEO classmate, um, I enjoyed getting to meet you many years ago and we have remained friends ever since. One of my favorite people in the movement. I appreciate your leadership and your passion for our mission and your work on the government relations committee and the hill day where we didn't have food i'm still disappointed about that and i know you are too because you've never been able to let that go but i think it's time to let that go it's all right we've we we've all moved on and i think you should too but um hopefully you feel great about the impact you've made in the movement in the athletes in rhode island and that you can enjoy this next chapter of your life and uh, maybe I'll even send you a card or two in the mail when I think of you. So best wishes, congratulations on a job well done, and I hope you have a great retirement.